Hello, welcome to Presume Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 6 of Hedio.net video series. In this session, we'll learn about preventing SQL injection using parameterized queries and stored procedures. We'll also learn about executing stored procedures and parameterized queries using the ADO.NET command object. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 3, 4, and 5 of this video series. So in part 5 of this video series, we have seen how SQL injection can actually happen. So let's quickly recap what we have seen in part 5. So I have a very simple application where we have a text box, button, and the grid view control. So if you look at the source for this web form, you can see that we have a text box, a button control, and the grid view control. And then when we click this button control, we have this code in the code behind file. Before we examine what this code is doing, let us see what actually this application is trying to do. In the database, I have a table called TBL product inventory, which has got list of products. Okay, now these are the products that will be shown in this the grid view control. Now if a user enters the first one, two or three characters of a product and then when he clicks get products, we want to list all the products which start with those letters. In this case he has entered IP, so we are listing all the products that start with IP, iPhone and iPads in this case. So to achieve that, we have this code. So connection string, we are reading the connection string from web.config file using the configuration manager class. So if you look at web.config file, we have the connection string there. The name of the connection string is dbcs. So we are reading the connection string. And using that connection string, we are actually building the SQL connection object. And then we are building the SQL command object. And look at the way we are building the SQL command object. We have this hard-coded string, select star from TBL product inventory, where product name like, and then to this hard-coded string, we are concatenating whatever the user types into this particular text box. Okay, so this is dangerous, and this is what is opening the doors for SQL injection attack to happen. And in this session, we are going to look at how to prevent SQL injection. Okay, and so obviously what's going to happen if the user types, you know, the IP, he's a good user, he just wants to use your application, so he typed IP and then clicked get products and he, you see the products here, you know, the application works as expected without any problem. But on the other hand, here a malicious user types in something like this, you know, what is going to happen? If he types something like this, this is going to be dynamically concatenated to this particular string, you know, as a result of which we get a query like this that you can see here. You know, select star from TBL product inventory where product name like. So this is treated as one query, and then this is treated as another query. Delete from TBL product inventory. So we are able to inject SQL into this text box, which then is actually used to build the queries by concatenating that and then we execute those queries on the database you know obviously these will be executed as separate queries and we have the SQL injection attack happening here and to prevent this we can use uh, parameterized queries or stored procedures so first let, let's see how to actually use parameterized queries okay so to use parameterized queries what we have to do is the first thing we have to change the way we are forming the command okay we don't want to be concatenating strings like this which is dangerous which in fact opens the doors for SQL injection attack so what I'm gonna do here is select star from TBL product inventory where product name like I'm going to use a parameter here product name we know that parameters in SQL Server start with at symbol so at product name that's the name of my uh, parameter for this query and then I'm getting rid of everything else there so that's my command okay and it has got one parameter there now okay so we are using a parameterized query here but then we have to supply the value for this parameter so how do we supply the value for that parameter to supply the value for the parameter first of all we need to associate a parameter I mean to this parameter we need to supply a value okay and to do that we can actually use the command objects parameters collection 
So parameters dot add. Now if you look at that, there are several overloaded you know versions of this add method. You have one method which takes a SQL parameter object or you can just pass the name of the parameter and the data type. You know there are several overloaded versions like this. Instead of using that I'm going to use another method called add with value where you will have to just specify the name of the parameter and the value that you want to pass for that parameter. Here the name of the parameter is add product name so I'm going to copy that so at product name and I want to pass the value and where is the value coming from the value is coming from text box 1 so text box 1 dot text okay so that's it we're done so we have used a parameterized query and for this parameter we need to supply a value and to do that we are using this add with value method of the parameters collection property of the command object okay and there's one you know simple change that we have to do for this you know we have to append to this one the percentage symbol the wildcard because we are doing a comparison using like operator select star from tbl product inventory where product name like if the user enters ip into the text box it will be ip percentage okay so we have the command you know the SQL command which is using now a parameterized query and a value for that parameter is now added okay so now let's go ahead and run this and see what's gonna happen so after we run this you know we should be presented with um, the grid view control and the button and the text box where we can enter uh, the product name let's say we want to list all the products that start with IP click get products and I see the products here as expected okay now let's try to inject SQL and see what's gonna happen now to inject the SQL you know this is what I have it ready here so let's copy that and inject that into the text box so now what's gonna happen this entire value will be treated you know as the value for this parameter okay so it's not going to be treated as separate SQL statement because if you look at the way we formed our SQL statement we used a parameterized query we are not dynamically concatenating the strings so whatever text that the user has typed into this text box will now be treated as a value for this parameter at product name okay because of which now we don't have any product that starts with this name okay so this entire value is treated as a value for product at product name parameter and we don't have any product in our database table that starts with this name so obviously the grid view will be empty but whereas now if you go to the table and look at that our data will still be there it's just that when we executed that query you know we didn't have any products that actually started with that this is the value with this name this entire thing which user injected into the text box you know is treated as a value for that product name parameter in fact we can see that actually to see that what you can do you can actually start a SQL profiler tool so and to start the SQL profiler you can go to SQL server management studio go into tools and click on SQL profiler okay SQL profiler once the SQL profiler tool opens up you can click on this start select a trace button okay so what happens now any query that comes to the SQL server for execution that will be logged in this tool we'll talk about SQL profiler tool in a later session you know this can be used for troubleshooting various things you know as far as SQL server is concerned okay so now let's execute that let's click this button once again so when I click this button you know a query will be sent to the database to look at what query is sent to the database let's say look at that this is the query that's actually sent to the database so if you copy and paste that into SQL Server Management Studio look at that it's using a system stored procedure called SP underscore execute SQL to execute an SQL statement and if you look at the SQL statement that's getting executed we have select star from TBL product inventory where product name like look at this like at product name 
that's the parameter that we have passed in and the value for the parameter look at this this entire stuff that we typed into the text box is now treated as a value for the parameter and if you look at what we typed into the text box look at this this is what we typed into the text box now we use this I P and then maybe the single quote okay now what happened that single quote is escaped by SQL Server automatically okay so so basically what's happening here is that the value that we type the text that we type into the text box is now treated as a value for that parameter instead of treating that as a separate command okay it was treated as separate command when we were dynamically building strings and we have seen that in part 5 of this video series okay so that's why it's preventing SQL injection attack so all we have to do is instead of building the commands dynamically use parameterized queries okay another way obviously to solve this is to use stored procedures so now let's see how to use stored procedures to solve SQL injection so obviously if we want to use stored procedures the first thing that we want to do is to write a stored procedure which can list all the products okay so obviously I have a stored procedure here which is taking one parameter at product name and then when we pass in the value for that parameter you know something like IP what it's going to do it's going to select all the rows from TBL product inventory where product name starts with that um, you know input whatever we have provided for this parameter alright so let's create this stored procedure execute that command completed successfully let's quickly test if the stored procedure is working as expected so if I pass an IP and semicolon uh, percentage symbol, press F5, I get all the products that starts with letters IP as expected. Now what we want to do, we want to call the stored procedure from our .NET application. And obviously to do that, there are simple modifications that you will have to do for this code. Okay. So the first thing that we have to do is we want to call the stored procedure. So copy the name of the stored procedure and then uh, into the command object, instead of saying okay I want to execute this command I'm going to say okay this is the the command that I want to execute okay the name of the stored procedure and then the next most important thing that we have to tell is we have to tell the command object that it's executing a stored procedure and not a transact SQL statement and how do we tell that using command type property so there is a property called command type okay and what is the value for that property there is an enumerator uh, system dot data dot command type enumerator and here we are using a stored procedure so I select stored procedure there so that's how we tell the command object that it's executing a stored procedure and not an ad hoc SQL statement okay and the obvious next thing is to provide the parameter value that this stored procedure is expecting so the stored procedure has a parameter called at product name so we want to supply a value for that so at product name is the parameter and the value obviously is coming from the text box and to that we are concatenating this percentage symbol because we are using the like operator and we want to use this wildcard and that's it that's those are the only changes that we have to do if at all if we want our command object to be executing a stored procedure on the SQL Server database okay so now let's run this and say the output so control F5 now we are executing a stored procedure instead of an ad hoc SQL statement okay so I type in IP click get products and we should have the products listed as expected and obviously if we try to inject the SQL there then we should get I mean the data shouldn't be wiped out the entire value I mean whatever text that we are typing here should be treated as the value for that parameter at product name in this case okay so let's click that button and actually let's stop this trace let's clear that and start the trace again and see what actually comes to the SQL server for execution so we are now executing a stored procedure so get products look at that so so this is the delete from TBL product inventory 
Yep. So if you look at this, this is what is coming to the stored procedure. Okay. Now when we click the button on the UI, when we click this button on the UI, this is what is the command that's coming to the SQL Server. Execute this stored procedure, SP get products by name, which has got this parameter. And look at this. This entire thing, what you injected into the text box, is now treated as a value for this parameter. So obviously, it's not going to be treated as separate, separate statements, you know, and we don't have SQL injection anymore. Okay, that's why the conclusion is that any time you want to execute some SQL commands, don't ever concatenate them, you know, you know, by typing if by concatenating the strings that the user has entered into the text box. You know, that is the major reason why SQL injection attacks can happen. And to prevent SQL injection attacks, the best way to do, uh, you know, to execute queries is to use um, parameterized queries or stored procedures. And this is exactly what's happening. You know, if the user, if we are using stored procedures or parameterized queries, if it's a stored procedure, look at that, you know, whatever we type into the text box, that entire thing is treated as a value for that at product name parameter. Whereas if it's a parameterized query, you know, again, this, this thing is treated, whatever we type into the text box is treated as a value for that at product name. The same in both the cases. It's just that uh, when we use parameterized queries, SQL Server is using SP underscore execute SQL system stored procedure to execute that SQL, whereas here it's using the execute statement to execute the stored procedure itself that we have defined. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.